For a long time I've wanted to take really good video of welding uh, to see how I weld and also um, I have some tips and tricks that I would like to show other people. Um, but getting the camera exposure right when you're welding has, is always, I think, really tough. So I'm going to try to to make something here. So I picked up this welding helmet on Amazon. Um, it was um, $67 and I've taken the uh, the the unit out of it, the, the auto darkening glass out of it. So I chose this one because it says it's a true color um, element and also it's pretty large so I thought I could put it over a camera lens. All right, so there's a, a camera lens for actually the, another lens for the camera that I'm using right now. Um, and so if there was some way that I could, you know, mount this in front of the camera lens, I think I could get really good, uh, you know, close up um, shots of, of welding. So I grabbed a pair of calipers and I sat down and measuring up the, cam the camera lens and the welding lens I was able to um, design up a little adapter that should hold it in um, the, the welding lens in front of the camera lens. So I thought I would just uh, step through some of the, the, the steps that I did to, to make this. So if I pull my timeline back at the beginning, I started by creating just a, a little ring. This was going to go over the camera lens, added a little step to it, and then uh, created a, um, a square sketch on top that then could mount to the round sketch. So it does like a blend, it's called a loft, between the, scare sh the square shape and the, the round shape. And then I did another loft to kind of remove the inside material, like that. And then uh, made some little notches for the, um, there's a little notches on the welding lens that holds a little plastic cover. And then I built some walls around it to hold that. And then some little tabs for um, my little spring-loaded hooks. And then I tapered the tops of those tabs. And then I removed material on the sides between the tabs so the tabs it can kind of be uh, free sprung. And then I made a little uh, wall along the side here to hold the, the darkness knob and put some holes in that. And then I uh, made some little ears on the, the lens side and then I made, put some holes in and then I cut a slot and then I made uh, one side of the hole larger so I can actually um, with a tap just thread this side of the hole and then I can put in a little screw and uh, that'll help pinch this round part shut around the camera lens to hold it securely to the camera lens. And then I uh, set up my 3D printer and I sent the model file to the 3D printer and went to bed. And this morning when I woke up, I had this. I kind of built it this way on the printer bed and it came out pretty much uh, just how I intended. You can see the little holes there for the, the darkness knob and my, my little spring tabs seem to work really well. I can put the the loading lens in place and it kind of snaps right in there and holds it really well. So wow, I'm really impressed. This turned out really nice. So here's the camera lens in place. You can see I uh, have two little bolts there that are just threaded into the plastic that just provide enough tension to grip down on top of the lens. And uh, there's the, the welding lens in place there. And the back, I have my uh, uh, brightness or, you know, the shade knob on the side. And then you can still get to all the controls up here, the, uh, the sensitivity and the delay, and uh, even change the battery. The battery's over here in this, this corner as well. So, uh, so there we have it. So um, the next step is, is we gotta, we gotta try it out. We gotta see what it can see.